What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we have another WWE action figure set up for you guys and it is Fastlane Edition. So as you guys know, Fast Lane is approaching. The pay-per-view is on Sunday. Not that hype for it. You know, there, there are not that many matches that I'm excited for. But I have set up the entire arena. We got the backstage and the arena all filled up with WWE action figures set up just like Fast Lane. I got some predictions in here. I got some other things. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get started. And we'll start off in the backstage area. So like we always do, I guess we can start off in the far left corner of the backstage and make our way around. But here we have Charlotte Flair, guys. Charlotte Flair feeling down on herself. She knows she could not get it done versus Becky Lynch. So therefore, Becky Lynch will be inserted into the main event versus Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair for that Raw Women's Championship. So she's feeling down on herself over there in that medical area. Also in the medical area, we have Nia Jax. Her and Tamina will fail to capture those Women's Tag Team Championships. I don't think that they should win at all. And Nia Jax is chilling out in the wheelchair. I don't know why she's smiling with her goofy, stupid head face. But nonetheless, she's over there just chilling after she and Tamina got their butts whooped. If we come over here, we have the tag team or the six-man tag, whatever you want to call it. We got Trash Corbin along with Drew McIntyre and Bobby Trashley after they got absolutely monsooned by the reuniting Shield, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns, of course. They are not going to lose, guys. I think that it's pretty obvious who's going to walk out of there as the winners of this match. So they're in the medical area after getting absolutely whooped. Drew McIntyre pretty pissed off because, well, Trash Corbin is absolute trash. He can't do anything right. And then Bobby Trashley, of course, uh, he needs to get away from him, guys. Drew McIntyre needs to break off, go on his own spill. You know, he he wants he's supposed to be the leader of the jungle and, and you know what I'm saying, king of the jungle. But uh, he, he, he keeps teaming up with people. They keep putting him in these random teams and stuff. Just stop that. Make this man a heel and let him have a universal title push. If we come to the forefront right here, guys, you will see that The Miz and Shane McMahon, the best friends here, are arguing with one another. And the reason they're arguing with one another is because they failed to capture their SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship. So Shane McMahon and Miz getting in each other's faces here. You know, they lost those titles at the Elimination Chamber to the Usos, and they finally, this is a, this is a symbol for them breaking up. I think that they are going to break up on Sunday at Fastlane, leading to their WrestleMania matchup. I'm sure Shane McMahon will be the face and Miz will be the heel. You know, they got to put Shane McMahon on that WrestleMania card, so that is sort of my symbolism here between the two men. If we come to the middle of the setup, guys, you will see the reunited Shield. We got the big dog Roman Reigns making his in-ring return at WWE Fastlane this Sunday. I'm actually pretty excited for that and Kevin Owens. Outside of that, guys, I'm not very excited. I love Becky Lynch and everything, but they've overbooked that storyline, so I I'm really just looking forward to Roman getting back in the ring and I'm looking forward to, you know, Kevin Owens getting in there and getting a WWE Championship opportunity. But besides that, anyways, we got the we got the shield here. I think they're going to break out the tactical vest. Even though Dean Ambrose clearly burnt his tactical vest, they're going to, you know, they, they're going to pull a WWE and they're going to go back on their word and everything they said and just treat you like a moron and just say, no, he never burnt that vest. What are you talking about? He loves the Shield. He loves Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. So I think that's what's going to happen here. They're all going to dress up in their Shield gear, even though I would prefer their singles attire. They're going to destroy the team of uh, Bobby Trashley, Trash Corbin, and Drew McIntyre. If we go beyond, guys, you will see that we have some interviews underway. Well, we have one interview. We have Corey Graves interview interviewing Becky Lynch after she just defeated Charlotte Flair. You, as you guys can see, she has her knee brace right there. She also has her crutches. She's being interviewed how she feels about having to overcome all those effing odds, guys. She had to overcome so many things. Even though she won the Royal Rumble fair and square and everything, they made her, they, they overbooked all this and made all this nonsense. But anyways, she's got a big smile on her face because she's headed to the main event of WrestleMania. Next in line will be SmackDown Live Women's Champion Asuka after she defeats Mandy Rose. She will be, of course, getting an interview She's excited, got that title, going to be carrying it into WrestleMania 35. And then, of course, we have the brand new women's tag team champions, Bayley and Sasha Banks. They will also be carrying those titles into WrestleMania. So all the ladies are sort of getting interviewed here back to back to back. All their thoughts on what they've accomplished heading into Mania should be exciting stuff. But all three of these women should be winning on Sunday, and there should not be any doubt about that. If we come back to the middle, guys, you will see the big man, Samoa Joe, the destroyer, coming down right here. Brand new United. United States champion doesn't even have a match on the card I know he just won the title but you could have done another fatal four-way or you could have done a singles match with R-Truth on the kickoff panel you could have done something and by the time you're watching this maybe they did add a match for Samoa Joe 
But uh, at this point of recording, there is no match for Samoa Joe, so I just got him walking down the hallway looking around, you know. I'm so glad to see Samoa Joe with some gold, and the U.S. title's a good fit for him. Hopefully, they actually book the United States Championship now. I feel like they have had that title on the back burner for so long, so hopefully Joe can get some good rubs and some good reigns out of this U.S. title. Just beyond that, we have the Raw Tag Team Champions Revival. I think they're going to retain the titles versus Ricochet and Black, and then, of course, we have Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. I think they're going to retain the titles you know they keep losing they keep losing on Monday Night Raw and I think that they're finally going to win a match as champs they're going to defend these titles in this triple threat tag team championship match and come out victorious or maybe it'll lead to like a no um, a no contest because of authors of pain interaction or interference or something I don't know what they're going to do but I hope that the revival do retain here up next we have the man Alistair Black he is I know he looks stupid because Mattel it's pretty much impossible to put him in that Indian style pose there on top, but he's just chilling to himself. After losing his match, he's just trying to get his thoughts together, you know. He, he's ready to get out of here, so he's just chilling on some storage units over there. We got Alistair Black. Over in the corner, we have a tag team, Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. They are, of course, talking it over after they came up short again versus The Revival and Aleister Black and Ricochet. Right here, we have the Usos, the SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. They're excited because they did overcome Shane McMahon and The Miz. Of course, we talked about that earlier, so they're doing the opposite of what The Miz and Shane McMahon are doing. Of course, they were arguing, but the Usos are not arguing because they, they won those titles and they retained them successfully, so it's going to be exciting. Maybe they'll take on the Hardys at Mania. I think that'd be really nice, or maybe we'll get a cool ladder match or something. I, I just really want a multi-man ladder match at Mania, whether it's the U.S. title, the tag titles. I, I just want a really good matchup for one of them, and I, I want to include a ladder. So there is the Usos. If we come forward a little bit, we have the Intercontinental Champion, my boy Finn Balor, and my boy Ricochet talking it up right here. Finn Balor, you know, saying, you know, you came up short in your tag team championship match, but uh, you can have a you can have an opportunity at my Intercontinental Championship. Would you guys like that? I don't care if it's face versus face dynamic. I don't really think that matters. I just want a really good Intercontinental Continental Championship match at WrestleMania. What a better way to start off Mania. Can you imagine the demon Finn Balor coming out and taking on Ricochet to open up Mania with like 10 to 15 minutes? Are you kidding me? They'd burn the absolute house down. And so we got the Finn Balor who doesn't have a championship match or any match at all at Fastlane, which is so disappointing, but he's just talking it up with his boy Ricochet here. Um, of course, Ricochet did debut on Monday Night Raw in a tag team effort with Finn Balor, so you know they're good friends here talking it up. Coming to the forefront a little bit more, we have Cien Almas and Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio dapping Cien Almas up or Andrade. I, I apologize, it is Andrade now. No longer Cien Almas, Rey Mysterio dapping him up after he successfully put over Andrade. I think Andrade is going to defeat Rey Mysterio on the kickoff show, even though these men should easily you know, be be on the main show and they should have a match at Mania and stuff like that. We're getting it here at Fastlane, so I think Rey Mysterio is going to put Andrade over here and he's dapping him up right there, telling him good luck and, you know, that he, he is a very special talent. And then we come to the forefront right here, guys, and uh, it wouldn't be Fastlane without, you know, fast cars and nice, and nice vehicles right here. So we got Brock Lesnar in his exotic vehicle just driving down the road here. This is not in the arena. This is him far, far away on the actual fast lane, the real fast lane, to WrestleMania. So he's not at the pay-per-view event, but he is in the fast lane on his way to Mania because he doesn't have to show up. He doesn't have to do anything. He's got his universal title. He's got himself, and the Beast Incarnate is looking good in his nice car, and he is on his way to WrestleMania to defend that championship versus the man Seth freaking Rollins. Cannot wait for that matchup, but this is Brock Lesnar. You know, some good symbolism of him not showing up at the shows, just, just kind of doing whatever the hell he wants, and it fit in because, you know, obviously it's fast lane. Now we're going to take it all the way to the arena, guys, at ringside. Over down here, we have our main event. Even though I think Charlotte and Becky are going to main event, this is what I have going on right here. In the middle of the ring, we got KO, my boy, giving a pop-up powerbomb to Daniel Bryan, the WWE Champion. You can see we got shenanigans going on. The New Day is at ringside. We got the New Day going wild with Kofi Kingston, Biggie, and Xavier Woods. The referee is down in the middle of the ring. The championship is in the ring, so shenanigans are going down here. Daniel Bryan about to get pummeled into the canvas by the pop-up powerbomb. And then, of course, Rowan at ringside. So I don't really know how this matchup is going to end. I do imagine Eric Rowan, and I do imagine, you know, the New Day or possibly Kofi or anything like that. I I think that Daniel Bryan's going to retain, but right here we got the end of the matchup about to take place. I just think it would be cool. I thought it would be cool to have, uh, you know, my boy KO delivering a big powerbomb to Daniel Bryan here 
at WWE Fastlane, but that pretty much does it for my WWE action figure setup, guys. I think the next WWE action figure setup we're going to be doing next week will be a challenge versus Bret Alive, if you guys are ready for that, but that pretty much does it for my WWE Fastlane 2019 WWE action figure setup, guys. Let me know down below what you think of the setup. Let me know what your thoughts are and predictions of WWE Fastlane. I also posted my full predictions. If you guys want to hear more info on that, it is on the channel. I posted it a couple days ago. Also, Vindication Episode 12 is up, and MDT Live Episode 12 has started filming, so you guys can be, you know, ready for that, and then it's on to the MDT Royal Rumble, but thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Go KO!